Hello and welcome to my channel. This is the first video in a multi-part series on thread safe motion matching in C++. And in this video, we'll be setting our public dependency modules. We'll then set up an anim instance proxy so that we can safely access data inside our thread safe functions. We will also set up our pair character. So let's get started. Okay, here I have a blank C++ project and I have imported the UEF and skeleton and the animations from the game animation sample project. Now let's start by enabling our plugins. So edit plugins and we are going to need motion trajectory. Let's enable this one. We'll also need pose search. Next, we'll need choosers. We'll enable this one as well. We'll also need animation warping. Okay. And we'll also need blend stack. Blend stack. So enable this one. And now we can restart the editor. Okay. We have enabled these plugins, but we still don't have access to them in C++. So what we need to do is to open up the build.cs file and include these public dependency modules. Okay. At this point, what I like to do is to close the uh, editor and the Visual Studio and navigate to the project uh, folder and generate Visual Studio project files. Once this is done, we can open up the project again. Now we can add our classes. So tools, new C++ class, and we are going to need two classes for this. So an anim instance class, let's add this. I'll name it anim instance base. I'll make it public. And let's put it in an animation folder. Let's create the class. Okay, we have our class here. We'll need another class which will be a character. So let's add another class of type character. I'll name it character base. Let's put it in a folder of classes. Let's create the class. Okay, these are all the classes we need. Now we can start writing some code. Let's start with the animation instance class. We are inside our anim instance class. Now let me paste in all the includes we need so that everything is done and we don't have to worry about errors. Okay, done. So these are the includes we need. So we want our animation system to be thread safe. It means that some of the functions that we are going to be writing here are going to run on a separate thread. But like any other function, these functions are also going to need data to perform calculations. So we need a system to pipe in the necessary data to our worker threads. In Blueprints, we can use the property access node to access variables inside thread safe functions. But in C++ land, we have fnm instance proxies. So an fnm instance proxy is just a struct that looks like this. So as you can see, we have three functions here. An initialize objects function, a pre-update function, and an update function. And then I have added these three variables that we need for our system. So let's implement these systems first. And the last one. Okay. So for now, we don't really care about the pre-update and the update function. So we will just implement them and call the super like this. And for the update function, we'll do this. 
so first we'll call the super like this next we will set the owner as a result of the try get pawn owner and make sure that we do have a valid owner if we do that references to our character and the character movement component like this okay so we are done with our initialize objects function now back in the header file we'll make a protected section and in here we'll add these so we'll add a variable for our custom f anim instance proxy and we need a create anim instance proxy function and a destroy anim instance proxy function now we can stably access our variables inside thread safe functions we should always treat anim instance proxies as read only so what i mean is that we should not try to set variables inside the proxy from outside the proxy or we should never try to set any instance variables from within the proxy. Otherwise, we might have memory leaks and crashes. Let's also implement the native thread safe update animation function. Okay, here we will call the super and then make sure that we have a valid owner. If we do have a valid owner, we are safe to run other functions. Okay. Now let's move over to our character base class and we'll make some changes. So we don't need the tick function and the setup player input component function. So we'll remove those and we'll write uh, input functions in C++ but we'll call them in blueprints. So let's start by writing our input functions. So Let's implement these really quickly. We have probably written these functions several times before, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. And here we have our uh, keyboard and mouse inputs. Okay, now for the custom stuff. Let's start by adding, adding these two booleans. So these will keep track of whether or not we want to strafe or sprint. Okay, next we need three functions to toggle our uh, strafing, crouching and sprinting. So let's add these. Let's start implementing these one by one. Let's actually name this one toggle strafe okay so first we will set our b wants to strafe and then if it is true then we want to use controller rotation yeah and we don't want to use orient rotation to movement but if it is false we don't want to use controller rotation yeah and we do want to orient to rotation but we need to include the character movement component as well. So let's include this. Now for crouch, we can do this. So if the new bull is true, we want to crouch. Otherwise, we want to uncrouch. Now for toggle sprint, we need to define a custom struct. And I'm calling it F gate settings, which will hold these settings. And we'll have different set settings for walking and running. Now we also need a tmap variable that will hold our current sprint status, so like this. But we need to define e gates, which is an enum. So we'll open up our mm.h, and in here we will define our e gates enum. Okay, so here we go. We have our e gates enum now, but our character needs to know about this. So let's include mm slash mm dot h. And as soon as we do that, you'll see that this error will be gone. Okay. So now let's implement our toggle sprint. So we don't want to sprint if we are crouching. So we'll say if 
yet character movement is crouching is crouching we don't want to sprint so we will return otherwise we will first store he wants to sprint okay and then we will set some properties on our character movement component like this so what we are doing is that we are creating a pointer to uh, our gate settings depending on whether or not we are sprinting and then setting uh, the values on the character movement component accordingly so our toggle screen function is also done now what we can do is we can start the local debugger and wait for the editor to open up okay back in the editor i'm going to create a folder for our blueprints okay in here i'm going to create a blueprint based on our c++ character character base and i'm going to name it character base pp now let's set it up so in the mesh i'll select the uefn skeleton and i'll set the location and rotation okay now in animations we have our gate settings so let's add two inputs and we'll set some values okay these are the settings also in the class settings i'll set this as an abstract class so we cannot paste this into the level okay our base class is done now i'll create another folder called player i'll create a child class called player let's move it here okay now i'll import the third person template okay and in here i need the input folder so i'll move this folder here and in the blueprints i need this and the inputs i'll copy this i'll go into our player class and i'll paste all of these here okay okay so let's call our c++ functions here so turn i'll pass in the x for the value and look up look up and the value will be the y value okay so <coughs> for move first let's do move right and again the value will be x and then move forward For the value, we'll plug in y. Okay. Now let's go into our input folder, and we need inputs for our crouch, strafe, and sprint. So I'll duplicate the jump input. I'll call it strafe. I'll duplicate it again. I call it crouch and once more this will be sprint okay in the IMC default we'll add these inputs so crouch okay next let's do strafe
and one more for sprint okay back in our player let's also implement uh, the inputs for uh, crouching sprinting and strafing so I a crouch okay so on started we'll toggle we'll toggle crouch I'll get the character movement component and is crouching now we want to uncrouch if we are crouching and if you're not crouching we want to crouch so we need to pass in the inverse of this okay next let's do ia brave so on started we'll toggle toggle strafe and for that we'll pass in the inverse of once to strafe so if we are strafing and we press this key we want to not strafe anymore and vice versa next let's do sprinting ia print and on started we will toggle sprint and pass in true and on completed we'll toggle sprint again but this time we will pass in false okay our inputs are done now in the player folder we also need a game mode so let's call it mmgm and in here let's change the default pawn class to player okay then in project settings let's go to maps and modes and let's select our mmgm okay that's done one last thing we need to do in our player is to add a camera so a let's add a spring arm let's add a spring arm and a camera okay and in the spring arm let's set the use pawn control rotation to true okay let's move it up a bit it should be fine okay in the constructor let's also add some default values so most importantly we are setting the rotation rate to minus one on the z-axis and in begin play let's toggle sprint and set it to false and let's also toggle strafe and set it to false right okay so now we can play and test so we can move we can turn and if we press our right mouse button it now uses user it now uses control rotation yeah if we click again we can now freely move the mouse and the character doesn't follow it okay so our project is all set up and next time i'll show you how to write thread safe functions in c plus plus Thank you.